pataphysics. I've talked about a number of metaphysical SCPs so far throughout this series, those being articles that look at concepts above the normal level of reality. SCPs that look at things like the afterlife, the nature of the human soul, and the existence of God or gods could be considered metaphysical, so there's a fair amount of them. Pataphysics, on the other hand, is a bit trickier, as it looks at concepts one step up from metaphysics. This is quite difficult to define in our reality, but in the SCP universe, this is generally represented in the form of the SCP Foundation realizing that they themselves are fictional. This idea largely stems from S. Andrew Swan's 001 proposal, in which the Foundation discovers that their reality is subject to the machinations of a bunch of writers. Pataphysical SCPs often involve concepts that are more or less strictly imaginary, as far as the SCP universe is concerned, that begin to impact their reality through anomalous means. Rather than really trying to dig deep and explain things, I think it's best that we just dive into some pataphysical SCPs. Let's start with something relatively simple, SCP-1304, a method of ritual murder with a lengthy list of requirements that, when performed in a fictional narrative, brings the victim into reality. The narrative must be published by a major publishing house for the anomalous effect to trigger, and no later than one week after publishing, a child will be born whose life will mirror, as close as possible, the life of the killed character. Characters from wholly fictional places and locales will be born in real places as similar as possible, even if the character hails from another planet or dimension entirely. Other events in the character's life will carry out for the individual, such as losing their parents at a certain age. Fantasy or science fiction elements will appear in an analogous form, such as a pet dragon becoming a pet horse. This individual will be seemingly unaware of the nature of their creation, and those informed of the specifics of their associated narrative find it to be nothing more than a curious coincidence. Any and all attempts to alter the life of one of these individuals in a way that explicitly contradicts the narrative their lives are based on will completely fail. In one experiment, in which a character's dog is killed in a car accident on their 17th birthday, the Foundation cordoned off an area three kilometers around the individual's home on their 17th birthday. Despite their efforts, involving more than 100 agents, a drunk driver was still able to slip through the cordon, evade pursuit, and strike the individual's dog. Even something as minor and simple as altering an individual's daily route to work, if it was described in the novel, proves impossible. The only deviation that occurs for these individuals from the original narrative is the actual ritual murder. Every individual created through this process lives past the point where they would be killed, at which point their life can be altered as normal. Attempts by the Foundation to recreate SCP-1304 have so far failed, as any narrative they have published doesn't produce the desired effect. It's unclear how so many authors have independently discovered the means to reproduce this anomaly. At least 76 narratives have been published so far, with various authors claiming the ritual came to them in a dream, or they were inspired by a film, or they were unclear where they got the idea from. It is revealed though that after the point in an individual's life in which their character counterpart had died, the individual seems to lose some sort of spark of life. Their minds become duller, their lives become grayer, and they lose the desire to grow. The head researcher wonders if they are reflections of their characters, and they lose their shine once the reflection is gone, or if they have now completed their purpose in life, and have become nothing more than puppets without puppeteers. Finally, the Foundation decides to try carrying out the ritual murder in the real world, on an unfortunate D-Class. They didn't notice any anomalous effects from the ritual, however, hidden in the text of the article are various pleas for help from an individual, stating that they are not supposed to be here, and that they don't want him here, they want to hurt him. It seems that some part of the D-Class was reflected in some other dimension although the specifics of what happened are left unsaid. As I said, that one is relatively simple, but demonstrates more of what we're discussing here, 
that being different levels of fiction and reality intersecting on one another through anomalous means. Moving from books to a television show, SCP-2614 is a DVD copy of the fifth season of The Sopranos television show. The disc is otherwise normal, unless the play button is pressed on a remote during a specific scene in the show. If pressed, the remote will now allow control over the camera view of the show, utilizing the directional pad and the center button. The camera will be free moving and fully maneuverable, but unable to pass through solid objects. Despite being in control of the camera, the events of the show will continue to transpire in real time and the scenes will no longer transition where they normally would, allowing the viewer to observe events outside of the script. The fictional world inside of the show is filled with a large number of individuals, and researchers even took the camera to the city of Boston to see the extent of habitation. Despite the overall realism presented, there are some oddities present due to it being a televised world, such as major characters being unusually audible in social situations. The Foundation spends some time wandering the world of The Sopranos, observing characters outside of scripted scenes as they act in an expected manner. The DVD had the word bookshelf written on it in black marker, which directed researchers to a bookshelf in The Sopranos living room. Here they found a note written in a journal reading, Art is the emanation of man, man the emanation of nature, God the grandfather of art. In other words, God creates man, man creates art, therefore art wouldn't exist without God. The Foundation then discovers that if they move the camera into a screen showing some other form of media inside of the Sopranos world, they can actually move into that world as well. They discover this by moving into a screen at a library showing the Wizard of Oz. They move the camera east for a number of days before entering what appears to be an outer space void colored pink and yellow. Still in the Wizard of Oz world, they move to a private showing of the Disney film Snow White. In this world, they move upwards until they see a continent separate to the one the events of the film take place on. Moving to this continent, they discover a young man in combat with a boar-like creature and it's revealed that the princess's stepmother is a dark sorceress that had been manipulating events to ensure the crown for her youngest son. At this point, since there are no TV screens here, the researchers reset things back to the Sopranos world, and move into a screen showing an episode of The Simpsons. When the camera is moved out of the primary city of Springfield, researchers found characters in the style of the show Family Guy despite the crossover episode between the two airing 10 years after this specific fifth season episode of The Sopranos. The cartoon physics of The Simpsons world was observed to cause considerable environmental and occasionally urban devastation. Back in The Sopranos world, researchers went into a number of other films, including The Last Temptation of Christ, in which, after the final scene, the screen flickers to white rather than going to credits and the forward movement of the camera was left on overnight. The next day, the camera was stopped in front of a luminescent female figure. The rest of that experiment has been expunged. Then they try a few other experiments, such as entering a commercial which descends into chaos after the 24 seconds of runtime is up, and an MP3 visualization on a computer, which consisted of a dark blue void with other waveforms in the distance, believed to be visualizations playing on other computer screens. Things get really weird though when they decide to enter a screen displaying a popular TV show inside of the Sopranos universe called Sandman. In one scene of the show, another note in a journal was found, reading, There was no god here, though I cried, I found his shadow, and could not die. Going one step further, inside of the Sandman show, which is inside of Sopranos, there is a popular long-running sitcom called Caroline Caroline. The Foundation managed to enter this show, but found its world completely uninhabited. What they did find, however, was a film playing inside of an abandoned home, a slasher movie titled Snakebite. Upon entering the film during a scene in which the killer corners the main character in a swamp, 
both characters turn and look directly at the camera. They otherwise remain unresponsive, and while moving the character out of the swamp and into a local movie theater, all characters found behave the same way, following the movement of the camera. In the theater, a romantic film is playing, displaying a scene set in a diner. Upon entering this film, the diner's lights become a deep red color, along with the rest of the lighting in this world. The surrounding city appears to be uninhabited, the sky is black and devoid of stars, although a dark red glow is seen on the horizon in all directions. All of the television sets present in this world displayed only static, so researchers decided to enter one. Once inside, the static appeared more like a cloud or field as the camera moved through. Eventually, the camera view ended up in a brightly lit hallway, only allowing for forward movement. As the camera advanced, the image became more saturated, and the rest of the data is expunged. An attached note tells us that this data is concurrent with pataphysical hypermodel DMRG. DMRG seemingly stands for Demiurge, an entity in Gnosticism believed to be akin to a false god who creates a false reality to deceive mortals. Basically, the foundation went a bit too deep, and they don't like what they're seeing here. Not a god, but a shadow of a god. That was a hallway inside of a romantic film, inside of a slasher film, inside of a sitcom, inside of a serial drama, inside of a serial drama. So we're getting pretty pataphysical here. Let's scale things down slightly though and look at SCP-3166, a 2.1 meter tall humanoid that's presumed to be pataphysical in nature and only manifests when the Garfield media franchise is performing poorly in terms of public reception. This entity's exterior is covered with cat fur, resembling a crudely made costume of the Garfield character, while its interior is composed entirely out of lasagna. When the Garfield franchise is performing poorly, 3166 will manifest near a suitable individual and begin to approach them with violent intentions. The individual can be someone involved in rival media to the Garfield franchise, someone formerly involved in the production of the comic strip, individuals involved in Garfield parodies, vocal critics of the franchise, or Garfield creator Jim Davis himself, if he was responsible for the franchise's negative reception. Upon reaching the target, 3166 will attempt to harm them through a mixture of blunt force trauma and force feeding them lasagna obtained from self-disembowelment. 3166 can be drawn away from this goal by the presence of lasagna, as it will make absorbing the lasagna into itself its primary focus. Through the attacking process, 3166 will vocalize by making various sounds akin to an extremely agitated cat. 3166 first manifested on October 23, 1989 within the Chicago offices of United Media, who published the Garfield comic strip at the time. 3166 wandered around the offices in a confused and distressed manner before assaulting anyone nearby. It disappeared 20 minutes later, although it would continue to appear in United Media offices around the country throughout the rest of the week. It's believed that the Garfield comic strip from October 23rd shows the entity's pataphysical awakening, and no one working on the strip at the time remembers creating that comic. Finally, it was determined that the meat present in the entity's interior lasagna is genetically identical to that of Jim Davis, who has complained of severe mosquito bites on nights preceding 3166 manifestations. Aside from the obvious comedic factor of it being an anthropomorphic version of Garfield filled with lasagna, it's a pretty interesting SCP, and a little worrisome, as the Foundation isn't sure why it appeared in the first place and can't really control it outside of ensuring the Garfield franchise remains successful. Let's get back into the deep end though, with SCP-3309. It begins with a notice from the pataphysics department that this file describes an unpredictable narrativic anomaly intersecting with multiple sub-narrative layers. Yep, yeah, sounds pretty pataphysical. 
We have to be inoculated against the embedded narrative o hazards before we can continue, which involves reading a specific paragraph. Sometimes we don't fade until it's too late, until we've withered, withered to the bone, and at the end there's nothing left, it's forgotten. Memories, hopes, dreams, we're all forgotten. How can we know that people even have these memories, these hopes, and these dreams? Who could forget us if there was nothing there to begin with? We fade from the minds of others, but not from our own. We live with it until we can't live any longer, until we forget that there was ever any way we could live in peace. And then that's when we fade away. Fade, fade away. That finished, we learn that SCP-3309 is a phenomenon in which catalogued anomalies spontaneously disappear, including anomalous objects, entities, locations, and conceptual structures, so basically anything with an SCP designation. Between 24 and 36 hours before the disappearance, a note is added to the SCP's file, which states that if you are not the author and you want to rewrite this article, you may reply to this post asking for the opportunity to do so. Please obtain permission from the author. For those unaware, this message is posted whenever an SCP on the SCP wiki becomes too low rated and is marked for deletion. After the 24 to 36 hours, all documents related to the SCP are wiped from the Foundation's file systems, including their most secure servers and the anomaly itself becomes either neutralized or disappears entirely. What's worse, around 71% of disappearing documents are connected to other unaffected anomalies, leading to a weakening of the Foundation's overall containment network. The Foundation decides to see what connects the anomalies that are disappearing, which amounts to around 40 each month. Affected items often involve documentation with excessive containment procedures, with either a misunderstanding of the anomaly's nature or an unprofessional level of care involved. They also tend to be powerful enough to threaten end-of-the-world scenarios, although documentation only outlines partial consequences of the anomaly, and the documents tend to be poorly written or filled with logical and grammatical errors. Again, the meta nature of this is hard to miss, as it's poking fun at the large amount of articles that are submitted to the SCP wiki every month and are soon deleted due to not being well received. The Foundation however looked over these criteria and decided to try altering the documentation for some bothersome anomalies to try and make them disappear. This seems to conflict with the earlier statement that 3309 is weakening their overall containment network but the ethics committee puts the proposal to a vote, and it narrowly passes. They decide to test it on SCP-4463, an anomaly that they can't really control and could flood the entire North American continent in 50 years. The documentation was changed to include heavy grammatical errors and significant inconsistencies among related effects of the anomaly, along with adding various fabricated addenda and an unrelated image. Not long after, 4463 was completely removed from all Foundation databases, and investigations proved that the anomaly itself was no longer active. Mission accomplished, and SCP-3309 is reclassified as Thaumiel after testing it on 19 other anomalies. We're then given a note from an individual named Researcher Smalls, who is assigned to the 3309 project. He ponders what exactly happens to these anomalies that they're making disappear, and what it would be like to simply fade away and disappear entirely, forgotten by everyone and everything. Another researcher then notes that researcher Smalls did not attend some testing one evening, and no longer appears on any of their itineraries or project files. A doctor says that no one named researcher Smalls has ever been involved with the project. The researcher says that he must be mistaken, because he knows researcher Smalls, and knows him to be the best memeticist they have. If he's gone, then perhaps there's more to 3309 than they first thought, as Smalls was assigned to 3309 since it was first discovered. The researcher also seems to disappear, as their account is suddenly deleted. We then go exceedingly meta, 
as the final section of the 3309 page resembles a section of the SCP Wiki forums discussing 3309. Researcher Smalls posts here, asking what happened and if 3309 is causing this. He's reprimanded because role-playing is not allowed in the forums, but he continues. He says that the place he's in is devoid of anything, and something's gone wrong. He says that his name is Adamo Smalls. He studied at the University of Oregon, and the Foundation employed him in late 2010 as a memeticist, partially due to his high cognitive resistance value. He was on a long-term assignment to research SCP-3309, but they were fools to believe that they could play with the universe like that. He doesn't recall what exactly happened, but he can remember some things due to his capability for memetic retainment. 3309 started erasing things systematically, including personnel, entire task forces, foundation sites, and sections of the entire organization, including the fundamental concepts that allow them to create the foundation. He wonders if he was one of the erased personnel, and says that he doesn't want to be forgotten. This is about as pataphysical as we can get, the idea that, to us, these individuals are just words on a web page, utterly fictional and ultimately meaningless. To them, however, on a narrative level below us, they are real humans, and to be erased so emotionlessly sends them to what is literally their hell, a realm of nothingness. Somehow Smalls was able to maintain a connection long enough to share some information to the SCP wiki but he too will eventually be erased and forgotten. The article finishes with, And so the question remains, are you worth remembering? You likely find that SCP to be either deep or tragic, or utterly nonsense, which I suppose is sort of how you might find pataphysics in general. Let's finish with an especially interesting SCP, which doesn't really involve the SCP wiki at all. SCP-2747 is a phenomenon appearing in print and online media, whereby platforms dedicated to the discussions of works of fiction begin to mention a non-existent instance of fictional media. In other words, people talking about fiction begin to discuss something that is completely non-existent, treating it as if it were real. These discussions range from brief mentions or comments to entire academic essays. What's more, these discussions include descriptions, screenshots, photographs of physical copies, and brief segments of text from the non-existent work. The descriptions are entirely consistent with one another, and the Foundation has found it's possible to completely reconstruct a non-existent piece of media just based on all these discussions. When questioned, people involved in these discussions deny having written the affected material, and deny the existence of the media in question. The Foundation has yet to find these discussions occurring in real time, only finding them after the fact. Additionally, they have only found these discussions after January of 2008. None seem to exist before that. It's the Foundation's belief that 2747 seems to be evidence of a naturally occurring anafabula, or anti-narrative. There are various ways to explain this, but basically consider it like an anti-meme, which destroys thoughts. The Anafabula destroys narratives, to the degree that, when the narrative is destroyed, it not only is erasing an entire fictional world, but it is also erasing it from the real world's existence, in this case, the SCP universe. These Anafabulas seem to be popping up naturally, meaning that, through a unique combination of concepts, tropes, and signs throughout different narratives, the Anafabula is coming into existence, leading to the narrative's destruction. The Foundation can't figure out firsthand what this combination is, since it destroys the narrative as a result, but they're working on piecing it together. We're then given a partial list of some of these destroyed narratives that the Foundation has uncovered. One short story written in 1951 describes an unnamed protagonist's journey towards a desolate black-horned mountain in order to deliver a gift to an unspecified recipient. His journey is rough and treacherous, and he ends up dying of exhaustion, appearing to be no closer to his goal than when he began. 
An animated film described as a psychological thriller chronicles a struggling manga artist as she attempts to complete and publish her first work under a tight deadline. Stress takes its toll, and she begins to hallucinate, with the film described as occasionally deeply disturbing. A turn-based role-playing game released for the GameCube in 2005, in which the player controls a party of six unnamed characters as they explore a ruined kingdom in order to find a lost companion referred to as Sister. It was apparently widely panned by reviewers, due to numerous glitches, seemingly incomplete graphics, and being impossible to complete. The game's NPCs continuously mention a coal-black, thorn-bound tome that would allow someone to obtain great power or unleash a dreadful curse. This tome doesn't seem to be in the game, with one reviewer stating that it's not even in the game's coding. A work of collaborative fiction titled The Scolopendra Wiki, dedicated to horror, speculative fiction, and weird fiction genres. The exact nature of its plot is hard to discern, involving vastly different storylines and a range of character interpretations, as well as other fictional universes and settings. A cast of seven characters seem to wander between a series of realms, collecting items possessing supernatural or abnormal properties, including a seven-sided obsidian emblem said to possess the power to destroy any object, person, or abstract concept with a single touch. It's apparently in the hands of a sinister, unnamed antagonist who is never seen. A musical album put out by the English rock band Radiohead, consisting of six tracks. The majority of the tracks appear to consist mostly of digitally manipulated samples from their previous albums, layered over with sparse acoustic instrumentation and vocals. Reviews were highly positive for the most part, and one reviewer believed the album's central theme to be spirals of isolation and inspiration, of feedback loops that resonate into the level of the deeply personal, the trembling core of creative psyche. A novel described as the contents of a manuscript and accompanying charcoal illustrations from a reclusive writer and artist diagnosed with schizophrenia. It is a nested frame narrative about a 17th century Dutch mystic who dreams of a supernatural being that is aware of its nature as a dream entity, and is indebted to the mystic for bringing it into existence. In exchange, it divulges the secrets of the earth, describing the six layers of the planet, including the cold and silent one at its core. Finally, an interactive novel of the mystery genre, consisting of a series of narratives from the points of view of six characters and a stream of consciousness narration of ambiguous provenance. Eventually, the narratives converge at a roadside diner during a thunderstorm where the characters exchange stories, and the later tales intertwine and reveal further information about the earlier ones. Obviously, none of these works are especially generic but what exactly they all have in common that creates the Anafabula is a bit trickier to discern. In order to find out what exactly the combination is that creates this Anafabula, the Foundation creates a procedure in which they have computers set about to constantly create procedurally generated narratives. These computers are presumably churning out massive amounts of new stories, along with descriptions of every story. If a description is found without an accompanying story, that means the Anafabula was created, and they can modify their procedure to narrow things down. The final appendix is their report on the project's overall results, which turns out to be… deleted. Well, of course, they can't really define the Anafabula properly without it destroying that information. What's worse is that the Foundation eventually came to realize the fact that started this whole pataphysical discussion, that being that they are in fact a fictional universe, and our universe is above theirs. If this Anafabula is recreated through some unlikely means in their universe, their narrative, their universe will be destroyed as well. Overall, the SCP universe is filled with universe-destroying anomalies, but here's another one that's unpredictable and uncontainable. 
their universe might just suddenly pop out of existence one day with nothing they can do about it. So what exactly is pataphysics? Well, I'd be lying if I said I was completely sure, but that's okay. It generally involves layers of narratives, and the imaginary interacting with the non-imaginary, but where exactly metaphysics becomes pataphysics is a little difficult to discern. Regardless, these are all really interesting and unique SCPs, from Garfield to Universe Destroyers. <laughs>